getting more money in your pocket. The new details on the governor's tax plan that includes rebate checks for taxpayers. And attention, I-94 drivers, you are going to have to find another route if you're heading downtown. The major closure that will impact your weekend travel plans. Plus, we are talking about bitterly cold temperatures this morning, but a warm-up is on the way for the rest of the weekend. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News starts right now. Good morning. It's 7 o'clock. I'm Grant Herms. And I'm Priya Mann. Thanks for joining us for Local 4 News. It was so cold this morning when I was driving in. I, <laughs> I had my one hand on the steering wheel, the other in my purse, trying to find my gloves. And my fingers were just freezing the entire time. That's my gauge is the steering wheel. I kept the lid off of my thermos with coffee in it so I could keep one hand over it. And then I would switch it to the other hand so that, that hand was warm. And then I would, I would go back and forth smart, on the steering but wheel. But you like your coffee piping on. I do. And so when it got here, it was a little too cold. Okay. So I had to warm it up a little bit but, but, your hands? but my hands were great I, I chose the fingers over the warm coffee this morning Brandon I don't know if that was a good idea but it was the idea well if you're you know a jazz handsy kind of guy <laughs> you know uh, me I you do. know me I, I do and and I'm with you listen uh, good news or bad news what do we want first bad, bad news uh, it doesn't help us this morning Okay. The okay. good news right. the good news was better first. It made more sense. The good news is it's going to be almost 20 degrees warmer this time tomorrow. The bad news is it does nothing for us right now. <laughs> right. Why did I ask you? All right, low teens. We're, we are even seeing some single digits, but that wind out of the south, not a big deal right now. It is enough to knock wind chills down to zero or sub-zero like we're seeing in Adrian, and we do expect the winds to be picking up. Could get a couple of flakes through parts of the thumb. That's really about it. Uh, through the day, we go mostly cloudy to partly cloudy, meaning we get into some sun and low 30s this afternoon. That breeze will keep it feeling colder all day, guys. So it's a layer up Saturday. Enjoy some sun. All right, thanks, Brandon. Now to a traffic alert you need to know about if you'll be taking I-94 this weekend. So I-94 is currently closed in both directions, right in the heart of downtown Detroit. Let's go live to Megan Woods. And Megan, there's a very important reason why the bridge is being demolished right in the middle of winter. It's been a very active scene there as well this morning. Uh, that's right, Priya. This is some much needed improvement. You can see it's a noisy weekend out here on Cass Avenue, but crews are not wasting any time, and that's good news for people who take this route. Um, but this bridge was built in the 1950s, and it hasn't seen much work since then. So MDOT says, again, this is very much needed, and it'll you'll see some improvements if you drive this way or for pedestrians. Bye-bye to the Cass Avenue Bridge that's no longer safe to use. It is beyond maintenance right now. The, the only viable option is to replace the bridge. The demolition takes place this weekend and rebuilding starts Monday when 94 reopens. It'll be just a slight variation of the normal configuration that we have out there, but the impact more so will be at the lodge ramps. North and southbound lodge ramps to eastbound 94 and westbound 94 ramp to southbound lodge will remain closed after this weekend for that bridge work to continue while keeping 94 open. So that's the goal is to move as, uh, traffic as efficient as we can on 94 while providing a safe environment for the contractor to work. Once the bridge is finished, it's going to be a lot more user friendly and it will quite literally bridge the gap that 94 creates here in Midtown. Two travel lanes in each direction like it has now, but we'll also have a bike lane each direction, nine foot sidewalks. And instead of a buffered bike lane with just pylons or striping, we'll actually have a protected bike lane uh, from the motor vehicles. Construction crews you see are already hard at work again and uh, construction is expected to wrap up on this bridge and traffic can get back here towards the end of this year. Live in Detroit, I'm Megan Woods, Local 4. All right, thank you, Megan. Well, this morning, new allegations of unsafe conditions at Wayne County's Juvenile Detention Center.
Problems have plagued the county's jail for months now, and because of understaffing and overcrowding, young offenders were moved from the downtown Detroit juvenile facility to an empty jail in Hamtramck. Now, a staffer is claiming multiple problems, including more overcrowding, leading to tensions and inappropriate sexual activity, and roaming violent offenders putting staff at risk. The county says they are aware of the complaint and have initiated an internal review. Two teens and two men in their 20s have been charged in a robbery and shooting in Macomb County. Police say the men met up at this apartment complex near 11 and Ryan in Warren earlier this week for a sale arranged on social media. They say a fight broke out and a 22 year old man was shot. All four face charges that potentially carry life sentences. And an alleged repeat criminal will stay behind bars after a recent court hearing. Torian Hudson was supposed to be on house arrest after a carjacking and shooting in December. While out on bond, police now say he brutally beat and burned the mother of his child with bleach and household cleaning supplies. He's now charged with a long list of crimes, including assault and domestic violence. Michigan taxpayers could receive rebate checks from the state under a new sweeping tax plan. Governor Whitmer and Democratic leaders of the state legislature reached a deal yesterday on a plan to ease taxes on retirement income, boost tax credits for low wage workers and issue those rebate checks directly to taxpayers. Governor Whitmer says the plan helps Michigan residents now, while Republicans want to hear more specifics. It will impact and benefit every taxpayer across the state. From the working family tax credit increase, so that's about over $3,000 in the pockets of 700,000 families in Michigan. A million children live in those households, and so this is going to be a huge deal for families. To the repeal of the pension tax, the retirement tax, as well as rebates to every family, um, every taxpayer, so that we recognize inflation and what it has cost and what it has meant so that we can help people now. The inflation relief checks. Uh, sure, that, that would be helpful temporarily in relieving the pressure that people are feeling based on inflation. But in my mind, why can't we get a guarantee from her that we're going to permanently cut the income tax and, and preserve that cut that's going to happen? It's already due uh, based on the, the trigger that was set in uh, 2015. So it's I think it's lacking some specifics. And then there are also some some elements that I think are are kind of glaring that are missing from the announcement. Governor Whitmer says we should expect to learn more details on Monday. Lawmakers are set to return to the Capitol on Tuesday, and Whitmer will present her budget to the legislature on Wednesday. Michigan leaders are trying to bring a new Air Force mission to Selfridge Air Base in Macomb County. The Harrison Township base is home to the A-10 Warthog, an aircraft that may soon be retired. It could mean the loss of funding and hundreds of jobs. Well, Selfridge lost out on two big contracts already, and now a bipartisan group is trying to land a deal to make the base the training center for the new F-35. We've been knocking down his door uh, from, from every single angle. Uh, I actually had a quick phone conversation with him a number of weeks ago. He was just calling to welcome me to Congress, and I took the opportunity to bend his ear. Congressman James talking about the Secretary of the Air Force there, Frank Kelly. A uh, decision is expected to, this, to come this spring. And with the bitter cold outside, it really is the perfect weekend for the Plymouth Ice Festival. You always find the silver lining. It is, yes. It is going to be a fabulous weekend. You can see some ice sculptures there on your screen. Those ice sculptures, uh, hand carved, not in danger of melting this morning. The event features carvings in front of businesses throughout downtown Plymouth. It's the 41st year for the event. Admission is free, and the festival runs through Sunday. What I love is they also have strategically placed warming centers. <laughs> yes. so you can warm your hands a little bit, then you can keep bruising. Not too close to the ice sculptures. Ever. Unless no. they want them to be, I guess. But right. yeah.